Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, I am currently working on version 3 of my uh, Kilo Charlie Mike Hotel Airport, John Glenn International Airport in Columbus, Ohio. Working on version 3. In 2022 they opened up a brand new car rental and they built this massive uh, parking garage it's not massive but it's pretty good size all right so that's what I'm modeling all right and uh, the, the the video after this I'm going to show you how to do the stairs that come down here all right but for this this uh, tutorial today is going to show you how to make a railing system by just a few geometries just a, a few posts and then the railings themselves are actually going to be a texture okay this technique can also be used to make fence all right but we'll talk about that at another time. I'm going to show you how to create a railing using textures. All right. So let's get started. So the first thing that I want to show you is the prototype. And when I say prototype, I just mean the picture or the data that I'm going off to make my model. Right. All right. So this is this is a current photo of the garage and this is the corner in which we're working in okay the stairs are right over here all right but look at the look at the railings it's just a series of intermediate posts and they're probably iron posts that are embedded in the concrete and it has tensioning cables there's 11 tensioning cables going across and they tie in at the end of the um, the the end column and then they get drilled and they go all the way through each uh, subsequent column until they get to the end and then they tighten them up all right they drill through this last one and then they tension them up and that gives the building additional rigidity okay however they're there for guardrails so cars don't go fly cars and people don't go flying off we are going to model this with basically um, three objects and then a texture all right i'm going to show you how to create that texture and how to apply it so that's the goal from the day so the first thing that we need to do is we need to put in our posts and how we're going to do that is I already have my 3d cursor moved to a certain location and I'm going to show you that so I'm going to I'm going to select the platform go into edit mode and zoom in and basically I just selected this vertice and then shift s moved my 3d cursor to that location and then I get out of edit mode and now I'm getting ready to work on the actual posts. Now I'm going to turn off viewport shading and go into um, the object mode, all right, or for lack of a better term. Now we need to add a new object so shift a and we're going to simply add a cube and I'm going to change the size to 0.32 feet in the X 0.32 feet in the Y so that gives me roughly a 4 by 4 inch post and the height of the post if we look at our I know that these these are around 4 feet tall okay each one of these are around four feet tall. So we're going to make that post four feet tall. So I'm going to change that to that. And now the origin of the post is in the middle. So I need to GZ two feet to bring that up to the level of the platform. All right. Now I'm going to hit 
period on my number pad to focus in on the object I have selected. Now it's overhanging the platform so I need to move it in the Y direction half the distance of the pole. So we're going to go G Y 0.16 and so that makes this edge flush. All right, because if I look at my prototype, this edge is flush with the concrete. All right, now the distance between each column from here to here is roughly 52 feet. All right, I think this section actually is 51, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to cry over a foot. The rest of them are 52, but we're going to divide this by four sections. One, two, three, four. Okay. So if I divide 52 by four, I get 13. So what I'm going to do is at this location, uh, when I copy this object and copy it 13 feet over, it's going to base it on where the current origin is, and that's right in the middle. All right, so I'm going to go into edit mode. I'm going to turn on x ray, make sure everything's selected, and it is. And I'm going to shift D to copy the post, hit escape so I don't inadvertently move it with my mouse, and hit G x13 for 13 feet all right and then i'm going to repeat that two more times shift d escape gx13 shift d escape gx13 now i could have used an array to do that but i only have three posts so it's it it doesn't hurt to just do it like this all right now Notice that my origin is in the middle of this first post that we put. Well, I want to change that. So I am going to select. Oh, I want to. I want. I need to move this post uh, 0.16 to the right. So I'm going to GX 0.16. So I get a vertice that is even with this face of the column. All right, now I'm going to select this corner vertice, which it already is, which is fine. That's perfect. That, there's nothing wrong with that. I didn't have to move the post. I forgot I had my 3D cursor in that location anyway. But that, anyway, let's, let's get out of edit mode. And let's right-click set origin 3D cursor. So now my origin for this entire railing system is going to be in this lower left-hand corner. All right, I'm going to go back into edit mode and I'm going to select this first post that I put in there. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it because I don't need it. Okay, because there's no post on each end. All right, and then I'm going to tab out of that, get out of ghost mode. I'm going to go ahead and do a save. All right, now this is called cube 001 because I have a lot of cubes in this in this file. And if you notice we're going to call this uh, railing okay we're going to call it railing for now all right so we have railing now I want to go back into railing and I want to add a plane all right because that's what we're going to apply a texture to so with railing in edit mode, I'm going to simply shift A and add a plane and adds one right here. I need to rotate it on the X. So I'm going to rotate it on the X, RX 90. So that stands it up. Okay. Then with my snap by vertice active, all right, I am going to shift click twice to make this vertice active and then I'm going to hit G and I'm going to snap to this vertice that's in the corner all right 
Then I'm going to, I can do this either way. So we'll do this side first and I'm going to change my snap to an edge. And I'm with these two vertices selected, I'm going to move those in the X until I snap to this vertice of this pillar of column. So my polygon, my new polygon I add goes 52 feet across. Now we need to make it a little taller. So I'm going to select these two top vertices and I'm going to move those G, Z in the Z direction and just a little bit below the very top. I don't really want them to actually snap into the the very top all right because if we look at our prototype the cable doesn't quite go all the way up to the top all right so now I have a, a face that I can apply a texture to and what I do want to do is take this face because it goes down the middle of the poles so I need to move that back in the Y direction, GY.16, because that's half the width of our post. So that plane now is going to become our railing system. So I'm going to tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go ahead and do a save. And so now the railing system is made up of the posts and the plane all right you see that and we'll we'll get to we will get to we're gonna sign we're going to assign the texturing the coloring and all that later all right now it's time to make a an image a texture that represents all those cables to make the to make the texture for the cables, uh, I am now in Krita, K R I T A. It's a free Photoshop clone. Okay, there's a link in the description of the video of how to download this if you don't have it already. Does everything Photoshop does. Matter of fact, Adobe made an announcement yesterday that they're putting out a free version of Photoshop online. However, it's a scaled down version, it doesn't do everything. But anyway, you can get Krita for free, and it will always be free. Krita.org. I digress. All right, so what we're in Krita, I'm going to create a new file. Now it's going to come up the correct size, and I'll explain that here in a second. So, new file, and my new image size is 2048 by 156. Now how did I get that? Well, easy. If we look at, let me bring up the blender again. All right, if we look from here to here is 50 is 52 feet, right? And this post is 4 feet tall. So if I do the easy math, all right? The proportion of height to width is about 7% or so. It's like 0 0.076943 or something like that. Okay. And so I translated that, that percentage from the 2048, which is the width. I want a 2K wide image. So I want a 2048 wide texture, but I want the height to be proportional to what the rails were, the railing system is. And that was like 7%. And when I did the math, it calculates to be about 156 pixels tall. Well, it was like 157 point blah, blah, blah. But remember, your textures need to be divisible by four. So... 156 is divisible by 4. All right, so that's where I got 2048 wide by 156 tall. Now we're just going to create a new image, and that creates this big old white 
thing. <laughs> this skinny old texture. Now, I think I already have it set up. Uh, I don't. Okay, I don't, which is fine. Uh, in Krita, we have it automatically creates when you when you create a new it gives you a background and it also creates your first layer that you can work on which is good okay now i want grid lines so i am going to show grids and i think i don't i don't quite have them set right so for the x spacing of the grid lines um I just, you can put 2048, which is the entire width of the image, so you don't have any vertical lines, okay? But my Y spacing, this these lines, the red and blue lines, um, I've done this before, so that's why it's already, I, it's already set up the way that I had it in the last session of Krita, okay? But... There are 11 cables, and if I divide the 156 by the 11 cables, I get about 14 pixels. So I made that my horizontal lines being 14 pixels across. Now, I want to snap, be able to, when I draw this, when I draw on this image, I want to be able to create a line and snap to each one of these lines okay so I want to snap to grid okay got me so far now I have up here is my color palette and I chose I like I said I've already done this once so I mean and then I said hey I want to show you guys how to do this um, so I chose a darker gray all right you just click on the color and you get the palette and you choose the color you want all right I chose a darker gray to start with and then I chose a lighter gray to kind of give the illusion of some light hitting off of the cable all right so I have two colors assigned to my session now it's just a matter of creating some horizontal lines that snap to each one of these now since this first line since this first uh, line is at the very top of the image, I, I, I need to fudge a little bit, all right? So I'm going to make my line, I'm going to click on the line tool, and I'm going to make the width of the line, I'm going to make that 8 pixels for only for the first line, okay? Now, you see that circle, that circle is the width of the line. I want all of my cables to be four pixels wide, but this first one, since half of it's going to be outside of the texture, I made it double. All right, so the distance between my first two cables, they may not be perfect in the real world, but it will give the illusion. Okay, so with snap to grid on, my line tool set, and my first line at eight pixels, dark gray. I just click close to that point and it will snap to it and then all I have to do is drag over like this and it automatically scrolls for me and I release my mouse all right now I'm getting ready to do the second line so I'm going to change the width to four pixels okay and I'm going to come down in the second line click here and then I'm going to go back the other way and I set my second line and then I'm gonna go back the other way at the third line see how that works alright so I'm just gonna keep on going down until I have my 11 cables drawn up alright so I'm just going back and forth it doesn't matter the direction that you you're going it will draw based on where you start and where you end right Okay, so I'm just going to keep going back and forth. Got a few more here. I know this is really exciting stuff to watch on a video. But I don't like to edit my videos. I just, I just don't. Okay. I mean, I can pause and finish this. But, you know, the more times you see it, I guess it helps, doesn't it? 
Okay, I think that's 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yep, one more. It may not be the perfect distance from the bottom, but it'll work just fine. All right, so I have my first set of cables for the dark gray. Now I want to accent them. And so I'm going to move up here. I'm going to change the background to now the foreground. So now the foreground is the light gray. And I am going to change the size, the width of my line. I'm going to make it two pixels this time. Because I don't want to cover all of the dark gray that I just did. I just want to give it some highlight, right? Okay. Just like we did with the dark gray now I could create a new layer and put the light gray on a separate layer if I wanted to which would probably be the smart thing to do just in case I ruin something so I'm gonna call this uh, DK gray alright and we're going to go to the layer new paint layer and we're gonna make this L T gray for light gray and then this is now going to be my active drawing layer all right now got my light gray color assigned my line tool selected two pixels now I'm just going to do the same thing I did with the gray except my light my lines aren't going to be as wide so I'm snapping to that point go all the way across here release come down here Go to that end just like that it may not be absolutely perfect but it will work just fine so I'm just going to go back and forth and finish these up and uh, my right yeah which one did I do okay that one doesn't have one all right so I'm going to pause and do a couple more swipes back and forth to finish that and I'll be right back okay I got all the highlights done now let's kind of see what it looks like so I'm gonna turn off the grid and so we just got a series of some dark gray with a little bit of highlight it's nothing fancy um, at the distances you're gonna be seeing it it's gonna look just fine now what we need to do is we need to save this out as an image, all right, as a PNG. And the thing is, is we need our alpha channel to be transparent, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the background because the background becomes the alpha channel. So I'm going to turn off the background, and now I get this checkerboard. That means that the background is transparent and that gets assigned to the alpha channel of the image. All right, and that's important, okay, when we bring it into Blender and into the sim. All right, so with only the light gray and the dark gray layers turned on, I am going to export this out as a PNG. And this is my model lib textures directory. All right. And I'm going to save it to a file called cablerail.png. All right. Now, I've already done it. So, I mean, previously. So, I'm going to use that one. Okay. But in this case, you would hit save and apply the, the, the image compressing to the PNG. And you'll have an image called cablerail.png. Click save. All right, that's what I did. Let's pretend I did that. All right. Now you're done with Krita. So you can get out of Krita. Normally you would save it. Okay. But I don't need to because I already have one. And let's go back into Blender. So now there is a texture in my textures directory that shows all those cables. Okay and it has a transparent background for the alpha channel now we need to start assigning our our textures to our model all right so i'm going to go back into viewport shading 
and I'm going to select our um, railing system okay and I'm gonna come over here to materials and I'm gonna create a new material and we're gonna call this um, uh, railing posts okay and that railing posts we're gonna make those uh, I'll probably yeah I'll we're gonna make those a little darker gray of course it's making everything gray but don't worry about that right now we'll get back to that um, and you know I can add some metallic to it if I wanted to just a little bit and we can bring down the roughness just a bit so there's kind of a sheen to it not much of one probably that, that may be too much but it'll be good enough for now all right so this entire object has the railing post color on it all right now what I want to do is go into edit mode and I want to create I want to create a new image all right I want a, a new material but first what I want to do is with the only the polygon or the plane or the that I used for the image with only that selected I'm gonna go up to UV editing and I am going to uh, what am I gonna do oh I'm gonna go to UV I'm gonna smart unwrap it and click it okay so there's my UV unwrap for only the, this plane that we have. All right. Now I want to come over up here and I want to add. Hit the plus on add a new material. And we're going to call this. Whoops. We're going to call this rail railing cables okay so this object now has two materials but only the post material is assigned so I'm going to click on the railing cables and I'm going to assign and click on a polygon or actually I already had it selected so it assigned railing cables to only the plane the posts have the railing post material assigned to them now we're going to define the texture for the railing cables so I'm going to come down in my materials and I'm going to come down to MSFS material parameters and I'm going to turn on standard okay and then I'm going to come down to where it says double sided okay because right now it's only going to be assigned to the direction of the normals okay to get the direction of the normals if we went to layout mode and had this selected and come over here and do face orientation notice that these are blue on the other side it's red actually since there's a texture already assigned now it's transparent you can't see it okay we we don't want that to happen or from one side you wouldn't be able to see the cables right so what we need to do is we're going to go back into uv editing okay and we are with this plane selected we're going to choose double side okay it will apply the texture to both sides of that face all right now it doesn't know what texture yet so we're going to come down here to where our textures are and for our base we're going to open and we're going to go into the textures directory and we're going to find that cable railing right there cable rail png 
and I'm going to select that and open that image okay and it's not showing in here so I'm gonna go open texture come down here to cable uh, cable rail open image that way it's there all right now notice that our our cables are going in the vertical direction that means that this polygon needs to be rotated 90 degrees so I'm going to make sure that I am on polygon select select all those polygons in that UV unwrap and rotate those 90 degrees and now I want to scale my polygon so I am going to hit G move that over here and we're gonna S and scale that okay and then I'm gonna to go to vertices select and I'm going to select these two vertices and I'm gonna move them in the X at the to the end and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side GX move those to the end and then I'm gonna fine-tune the top I'm gonna to GY move those up to there and then I'm gonna do the bottom ones I'm gonna select the bottom vertices GY move those down and there you see so far it looks like we have cables going through there right now you can't see through them see see the the stairwell windows and stuff you can't see through them so the next step since the alpha channel is transparent in this image we can come up to settings in our materials uh, where is that that's up here settings and change blend mode to alpha blend and they become transparent but I also want to come down to alpha mode and change opaque to blend okay now we're gonna go back into layout mode and click off our railing and now you have an image you know I think this could probably be flipped 180 degrees because the bottom cable the two top ones should be close to each other okay so let's go back into UV editing and let's select our polygon and let's rotate that 180 degrees we're gonna flip it over okay and then we're gonna go back in the layout and there we have more space on the bottom okay that's kind of what I was expecting to do all right so we have created a railing system without having to create model each one of those cables going across now obviously if if you get up on that if you get up on that garage and you come over here you know the cables don't have any width but that's the only disadvantage of using a using an image to do your to create this effect all right it doesn't have a third dimension right okay but most of the time you're going to be seeing the scenery like this all right something like that okay so let's do a save and see what happens when we make a copy now technically I should have made like I said this this gap right here is 51 feet and this gap is 52 feet all right so I'm gonna change that by I'm gonna select select our railing system here I'm gonna go into edit mode turn on vertices I'm gonna select these two vertices and I'm going to move those in the X direction one more foot okay so it goes inside of this post which is not that big of a deal all right so now it's 52 
feet are crossed. All right. But like I said, if you're looking at this stuff from a distance, it doesn't look that far off. Now, we can use this object, this railing object that we have, and we can make a copy to each floor that we want. All right. So, and you can do it, you can do it different ways. You can actually create separate objects or you can go into edit mode and um, add the objects to the current object. All right. So if I want one of these two to be separate uh, objects, I'll get railing 001. So if I did a shift D escape so I don't move it inadvertently and then I G Z and come down until oh I don't have snap on oh I have snap on then I want snap on vertice and actually which which vertice is selected I can't remember ah oh, over here we want to select all okay wait a minute I'm getting ahead of myself I'm gonna control Z control Z so I can get rid of railing 001 so we can redo this part there we go all right so it's like I haven't even copied it yet so I'm going to go into edit mode select everything with the a make sure I'm on vertice select this corner vertice to twice to make it active see it's white okay and then I'm going to get out of edit mode now this is this is the active vertice and I'm going to shift D escape so I don't move it and then G Z until it snaps down here boom and then I can do the same thing again and add another one here okay and then I can add them all the way across I can then after I get as many added okay so I can do these three all at once here then I can uh, make sure I'm out of edit mode yep uh, select these hold down the control make railing the last one selected to make it active and I can hit control J and now all three of these are part of the same object so I go into edit mode and I hold the shift and select actually yeah it doesn't matter so select a vertice to be active get out of edit mode and then I can hit shift D escape and then we're moving this way in the Y I mean the uh, X so G X and just come over here until it snaps and then I can do the same again control D escape so I don't move it inadvertently G X and then snap okay so that is one way a good way to make a cable rail using blender for Microsoft Flight Simulator okay you can do fence like this too. You can you can download images. I don't know if I have any. I might. No, I don't have any right now. But you can go to any one of the texture free texture places like texture.com. You can get some things off of there for free. But you can download chain link fence and all this kind of stuff and you can create a fence using just like this now I'm gonna do another video um, in a in a week or so on how to download an image and change the background to transparent so your alpha channel works correctly but you can make a chain link fence the exact same way by using a uh, face alright so I just showed you how to do it using um, using an image making a cable railing for this parking garage all right the next video I'm going to put out I'll probably start that on Monday 
this is Friday okay taking the weekend off I am going to show you how to make a staircase system that in this garage okay <coughs> so you'll be <coughs> sorry <coughs> you'll be learning how to make that staircase and we're going to use Archimesh add-on for blender to do that so I hope you saw a good way a cool way an easy way to make a railing system uh, or a fence if if you wanted to do it that way uh, so you don't have to use the ones that come in to the simulate you know that are already in the scenery editor all right so i hope this helps um, please subscribe and hit the notification bell and uh, like Give me some thumbs up and start some conversations in the comments. That would be fantastic. And if you feel inclined, uh, buymeacoffee.com slash myphysicalworld. Um, you guys are great. Thank you for all those people that are supporting this channel and uh, making donations and stuff like that. You guys are awesome. I'm not making millions of dollars, but um, I don't really intend to that's not my goal um you guys have uh you guys have been fantastic so i will see you guys on the next video we'll see you guys later have a great weekend